Blink a hole. Satire news. Who are the two women with Queen Camilla at the coronation? Annabelle Elliot and Lady Fiona Lansdowne were Queen Camilla's ladies in attendance at the coronation. Blinkerhole takes a closer look at the two ladies by her side on the big day. Annabelle Elliot is Queen Camilla's sister. She is a British interior designer, and she is also allegedly the person that helped Queen Camilla and King Charles spend time together when they were both married to other people, Andrew Parker Bowles and Princess Diana. Annabel and Simon Elliot's country home was said to be the place where Camilla and the then Prince Charles would meet up for weekend getaways. Annabel has also helped the royal couple by designing their luxurious interiors. In a newspaper article by the Daily Mail in 2016, the then Prince Charles had reportedly paid £1.5 million to Camilla's sister Annabel, who has apparently earned huge sums from the Duchy of Cornwall for a string of revamps in the past 11 years. Annual accounts show £1.5 million has been paid to Annabel Elliot since 2005. Blinkerhole also found numerous articles regarding further sums allegedly being paid to Annabel Elliot. Oh. In 2019, the Express newspaper reported that the then Prince Charles had argued with Camilla's sister Annabel, the prince's chief interior designer of his estates, after she took charge of designing 12 Duchy of Cornwall cottages and renovating Dovey Castle in Devon. Their working relationship was allegedly not entirely smooth, as she and the prince quibbled over some of Annabel's design choices. In 2012, she led a project converting a rundown barn building into an upmarket guest house in the grounds of Dumfries House in Ayrshire, Scotland. The guest house would provide accommodation to those choosing to have their wedding in Dumfries House, an old building bought by the Prince. The income from the guest house will be contributing to the running costs of the estate, which were expected to be around £500,000 per year. He also hoped it could help pay off the £20 million that his charitable foundation had borrowed to buy the old manor in the first place. The Mirror newspaper in 2022 reported that Camilla's sister Annabel still hadn't forgiven her for a cruel childhood prank with a teddy bear. Camilla revealed a hilarious ongoing dispute with her sister Annabel in an ITV documentary called Camilla's Country Life. Annabel admitted that they have a disputed childhood memory over her beloved teddy bear, which was actually buried in the garden by Camilla. It was only decades later that the then Duchess actually owned up to the prank. She only owned up to me about a month before I got married that she buried it, explains Annabel. Camilla explains, my sister and I had had a bit of an argument so I buried him. Sibling rivalry. Yes, Tiddy Bear, he had a very happy resting ground. In the Rose Garden. While admitting it was a good way for her Teddy to end his life, Annabel still holds a grudge all these years later. When asked if Camilla has been forgiven, she says, certainly not. It still rankles to this day. Now. Let's take a look at the other companion of Queen Camilla, Lady Fiona Mary Pettifitz Maurice, Marchioness of Lansdowne, previously known professionally as Fiona Shelburne. Blinkerhole has noticed that there doesn't seem to be many articles about Lady Lansdowne, and the ones we have found are rather bizarre. For example, let's take a look at the following article in the Gazette and Herald newspaper from 2022, which has the headline, The High Sheriff of Wiltshire opened a new charity shop in Devizes this morning. Lady Lansdowne, along with the shop's manager Tilly Meredith, cut the ribbon at around 9.30am to celebrate the opening of Wiltshire site on the marketplace. 
Another article in the Swindon Advisor from February 2023 sees Lady Lansdowne unveiling a plaque at a brewery, and another from 2022, when she was sworn in as the new High Sharif. Lady Lansdowne was also spotted at an Alzheimer's support group in Malmesbury, as reported in the Wilts and Gloucestershire Standard. Lady Lansdowne, High Sheriff of Wiltshire and Marchioness of Bowood visited Riverside Community Centre in Malmesbury on Monday, March 6, 2023. She came along to meet the group and take part in the session. They enjoyed a cup of tea, cake and a chat. Blinkerhole's favorite article was featured in the Daily Mail in 2021 where the headline reads, Wines and Spirits. Pub manager fears Ghost Lady Lansdowne will scare off staff as spooky footage shows chair moving by itself and chalkboard randomly swinging. We at Blinkerhole are unsure if the article is making reference to the real Lady Lansdowne, however, it is just too good an opportunity to pass up. It states that a pub manager fears the venue's resident ghost may leave employees too scared to come into work and see her short-staffed following a series of eerie incidents. Haley Budd, 33, who has worked at the Lansdowne pub in Cardiff for eight years, said the spook was dubbed by regulars as Lady Lansdowne. CCTV footage emerged of a chair mysteriously tucking itself in under the table and a chalkboard apparently swinging on its own at the pub in front of punters. Ms. Bud continued, weird things do happen, but nothing quite as blatant and obvious as this. There's a long-term rumor among the regulars about a woman haunting the pub, and people who live in the flats above the pub say there's strange goings on up there. I'm not scared, just because I've worked here for eight years, and she's never done anything that's a cause for concern, she clearly just wants to make herself known. <laughs> Blinkerhole would like to thank the Daily Mail for mistaking their article about who was on the balcony at the coronation of King Charles III. In the balcony image, number 20 references Lady Lansdowne, and number 22 references Annabelle Elliot, yet in the key reference underneath, the ladies are listed the other way around, number 20 for Annabel Elliot and number 22 for Lady Fiona Lansdowne. If it wasn't for the mixing up Annabel Elliot and Lady Lansdowne, by inserting the wrong number reference on the balcony image, and drawing attention to them both in this way, Blinkerhole may never have been able to identify who they were. In an article by the Washington Post shortly before the coronation of King Charles III, journalist and author of The Palace Papers, a lady called Tina Brown, was interviewed by Ms. Coles regarding the upcoming coronation, and who she thought hadn't made the cut. Tina Brown seemed to somewhat deflect the question. Later in the interview Tina Brown was asked if she thought it would be the last coronation we would ever see. Tina Brown replied, yes, it may well be. I wouldn't be as surprised if it is the last one. Absolutely. Yes. Blinkerhole wanted to know more about Tina Brown, who is pictured here in her youth. Wikipedia states that Christina Hambly Brown, Lady Evans, is an English journalist, magazine editor, columnist, broadcaster, and author. She is the former editor-in-chief of Tatler, Vanity Fair, and The New Yorker, and was the founding editor-in-chief of The Daily Beast. Brown was also chairman of Talk Media, which included Talk Magazine and Talk Miramax Books. In 2010, she founded Women in the World, a live journalism platform to elevate the voices of women globally, with summits held through 2019. Brown is also the author of The Vanity Fair Diaries and The Palace Papers and The Diana Chronicles, a 2007 British biographical book by Tina Brown that chronicles the life and death of Diana, Princess of Wales. Born in England, Brown emigrated in 1984 and became a U.S. citizen in 2005. She now holds dual British-American citizenship. In 2000, she was appointed a CBE, Commander of the Order of the British Empire, for her services to journalism overseas by Queen Elizabeth II. In September 2022, 
she was a CBS commentator for the funeral of the Queen. In 2023, in partnership with Reuters and Durham University, Brown is hosting Truth Tellers, the inaugural Sir Harry Evans Global Summit in Investigative Journalism at the Royal Institute of British Architects, in honor of her late husband Sir Harold Evans, the former editor of the Sunday Times. Brown was born in Maidenhead, Berkshire, England, and grew up in the village of Little Marlow in Buckinghamshire. Her father, George Hambly Brown, worked in the British film industry producing the Miss Marple film starring Margaret Rutherford. Tina Brown's father George Hambly Brown was married to actress Maureen O'Hara. Blinker Hall found an unusual article containing information regarding this connection. The Daily Mail inquired why does the stick of Top Gear fame have to be anonymous? Further down the article is the following snippet. Her mother, Bettina Kaur, who married George Brown in 1948, was an executive assistant to Laurence Olivier on his first two Shakespeare films. Brown's elder brother, Christopher Hambly Brown, became a film producer. You can find out more about Tina Brown's extraordinary life, as there are many articles and photographs of her across the internet. Blinkerhall decided to investigate, who did not receive a coveted invite to the coronation ourselves considering Ms. Brown seemed to avoid the question. Among those not invited and those who declined an invitation are the grandchildren of Queen Elizabeth's cousins, including Lady Amelia Windsor, who was named as the most beautiful member of the royal family by Tatler magazine, and the king's godson Lord Nicholas Windsor. Also, Zenuska Moat, granddaughter of Queen Elizabeth's cousin Princess Alexandra and Lady Pamela Hicks, one of the Queen's two surviving bridesmaids who, had she been invited would have become one of the few remaining people in the world to have lived through and attended three coronations. The Duchess of York, Sarah Ferguson, also did not attend the coronation, and Princess Diana's brother Charles Spencer, was noticeably absent from King Charles III's coronation on Saturday, the 6th of May 2023. In an article by Us magazine, earlier this year, Prince William and Prince Harry's 58-year-old uncle Charles Spencer hinted that he wasn't planning to attend the festivities. I think we've never had an official role in it, just turned up like everyone else used to, when it was the hereditary peers and the House of Lords. That's no longer the case, Spencer said on the Off Air, with Jane and Fee, podcast in February, when asked about participating in the crowning ceremony. There is some old coronet knocking around somewhere, but I won't be wearing it soon, I don't think. Charles Spencer returned to social media after the coronation. In an article by Hello Magazine, the Earl was reported to have returned to social media for the first time since the event on the Sunday. However, he chose not to refer to the coronation, and instead provided an update for his followers about his family estate, Althorpe House. Sharing a video of a peacock confidently striding over some grass, the father of seven captioned the clip, Jim the Peacock, Tim the Peacock's younger rival moving quickly across the lawn at Althorpe House before his nemesis can intercept him. Could the mainstream media be telling secrets in code within their articles? Study them closely to find out more. Please like and subscribe for more journeys through the blinker hole. For entertainment purposes only.